Good morning everybody and welcome to this morning's worship. Come as God's Spirit calls us. Come as God's Spirit calls us in gentleness. Come as God's Spirit calls us in worship. Come as God's Spirit calls us to action. Lord, we come. Let us pray. Lord, help us to look out and listen for your Holy Spirit. May we welcome you with open hearts and minds. Call us, inspire us, surprise us and challenge us. Give us confidence and calm assurance. Lead us to your power and your love. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we delight in your creation which we see and experience all around us. We thank you for all its many forms and the smallest details that strike us with their beauty. We marvel at flowers, trees and plants expressed in a rainbow of colours and shades in between. We are thankful for one another and give you praise for the variety of characters and personalities to be found in the people around us. We are so grateful for your Holy Spirit given to the Apostles that first Pentecost and to all your followers down the ages. At Pentecost, we remember your creative and sustaining power demonstrated in the Spirit and we ask that you will always listen to the Spirit's prompting and interceding on our behalf, especially when we would not know how to put those longings and needs of your people into words. We pray for greater community to be expressed by the people of the world so that they may live peacefully in one another's company. We ask you to send peacemakers and advocates to signpost better ways of doing things. We pray for justice, fairness and equality to be held in high regard throughout the world. We think of those currently held in prison in various countries. We ask that they be treated well and their cases be heard justly, that those who should not be imprisoned might be released and for mercy to be shown to them. We pray for those who are bereaved, both recently and to remember the loss of loved ones. We ask for your spirit to bring peace and comfort to the lives of those who miss them. And for your assurance that the love of Jesus is stronger than death. We pray for those who are nursing the sick and dying, the elderly and frail, and those with the virus. We ask that both they and those whom they nurse will be given strength and know your love in their own lives. We pray for those who fear the loss of companions, whether human or a faithful pet. We ask that you will reinforce the happy memories so that they will outweigh the pain of loss. We pray for people who feel isolated or alone, stressed and all at sea in their lives during this pandemic and ask that your spirit may bring them joy and rest in the little things they find they can still appreciate. We ask you for guidance as a church as we look forward to meeting together in our building in the near future. May your spirit inspire us to rebuild our community with love and be bold in expressing our love for you so that all can see how great you are. We ask all of these things in the name of Jesus, your Son, our Saviour, our Lord and our friend. Amen. Good morning, Church. Um, our first reading is taken from Ezekiel 37 verses 1 to 14. The Valley of the Dry Bones. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out of the spirit of the Lord, and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophecy, prophesy to those bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter in you, and you will come to life, and I'll attach tendons to you, and make flesh upon you, and cover you with skin. And I'll put breath in you, and you will come to life, then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesy 
as I was commanded. And I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come breath from the four winds and breathe into these slain, and they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood in, up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, our hope is gone, we are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says, My people, I am going to open your graves and bring up, bring you up from them, and I bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from them, I'll put my spirit in you and you will live, and I'll settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Then you know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. Our second reading is taken from Romans chapter 8, 22 to 27. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we, also, we ourselves have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we are saved, but hope that is seen is not hope at all. Who hopes for what they have already have? But if we hope for what we do not have, yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us from the wordless groans. And we who searches our hearts, and he who searches our hearts, and knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. Here is a reading of his holy words. Pentecost it's a Sunday when we celebrate the birthday of the Christian Church and the start of its mission to share the good news of Jesus to the whole world. The first Pentecost occurred at a time when people who were from a Jewish background and living in various surrounding countries gathered together in Jerusalem to celebrate the Jewish festival of the Feast of Weeks. A time full of thanksgiving to God for everything he had provided for people in the harvest. Acts 2 describes what happened next. As the people met together, a sound was heard like the rush of a violent wind. Tongues of fire appeared and descended on each of the apostles as they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Just as Jesus had told them they would. They were filled with joy. They began to speak in other languages and people gathered from other countries in Jerusalem for the festival discovered they could understand them in their own native language. We may wonder what lay behind God's giving of the Holy Spirit. What was his purpose? What would this accomplish? What would change in people's lives as a result of this? We could take a look at the intentions of God from way back in the Hebrew Scriptures, taking a peek at the prophet Isaiah's vision of a valley of dry bones and what was God's response to transforming this scene. We could look at one of Paul's letters to the Christians at Rome, in which he describes the great blessing of having the Spirit at work in our lives. The prophet Ezekiel, we are told, was set down in his vision by the Spirit of the Lord in a valley filled with dry bones. All around he saw these dry bones before him. They were dry because they'd been in that place a very, very long time and no trace of flesh or muscle or skin was left attached to them. A gruesome scene, quite a sad scene. The prophet must have felt desolate and completely without hope as far as the future of this valley of bones was concerned. God asked him, mortal, can these bones live? Well, naturally the obvious answer would have been, of course not. Yet Ezekiel doesn't give a definite no. He replies, O oh Lord God, you know. 
as much as if to say, well, not under normal circumstances, but it all depends on what you, the God of heaven and earth, want to bring about with them. God tells him to prophesy to these bones. Tell them, hear the word of the Lord. He was instructed to tell these bones that God would lay sinew and flesh on them, cover them with skin and put his breath into them. Ezekiel did as he was instructed and they became like human beings again, only they had no life in them, no breath. Ezekiel was asked once again to prophesy, not to the bones this time, but to breath itself. He was to say, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. The beings that once were dry bones came to life and stood up on their feet. The vision had been an exercise to demonstrate the will, the purpose and the power of God to bring to life where there is no life, to breathe energy into what seemed hopelessly dead and lost to the world. God explains that this is a, a dummy run, so to speak. He says that these bones represent the whole house of Israel who have recognised that as they stood at that moment in time, they were just like in Ezekiel's vision. The people of Israel had been living in exile and they weren't really living life, neither as they nor as God expected them to. They were dry bones spiritually before God and they were as if dry bones physically in exile in Babylon. They had come round to complain, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. They had plenty to eat and drink in exile, but they were cut off from God. The Babylonians, when they had taken them off into exile, had destroyed the temple in Jerusalem and they'd stolen the religious objects within it. They had lost their religious roots. They'd forgotten how to relate to God. They couldn't see through the cloud of their present situation to their Lord opening his arms to embrace them once more and come to their rescue. Before God could send Ezekiel to the people far from God and living in this hopeless state of exile in Babylon, God had to restore Ezekiel's faith too. And that's the reason for this vision of bones in a valley. There would be no point to Ezekiel telling the people how God was going to bring new life to their nation and restore their relationship with him in a big way if the prophet was in any doubt that God both wanted this to happen and actually had the power to breathe new life into dry bones. God's promise to the people of Israel through Ezekiel is this, I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act. When we turn to Paul's explanation of how the Holy Spirit works amongst the believers, we see further into the purposes of God to bring new life where there is at present hopelessness and spiritual dryness. The Holy Spirit has come upon Jesus' followers for a purpose. Paul speaks about a new birth taking place. He speaks about the whole of creation groaning in labour pains until now. What has been full of promise yet has yet failed to come to fruition and is proving to be a very painful experience will come about. In our difficult life situations and our feelings of hopelessness, we do not know how God is going to bring us through so that we can find the transformation that we seek. We find it impossible to be sure of using the right words to pray. We know we ought to pray with the mind of Christ and not be influenced by our short-sighted human inclinations, yet we don't quite know how to do any different. Paul tells us we are not without hope. Paul says, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. When we do not see any possibility for change, God sees every step ahead of us is navigable. It may not be without obstacles or even danger, 
but it is possible. We may be short-sighted by thinking that the way ahead is going to be exactly like the journey we took to get here, but God sees possibilities ahead of us that are new and exciting. We may be thinking that there's not a lot of hope in getting back to where we once were at the start of the coronavirus pandemic. A lot of things have changed since we've been through the various lockdowns and have hopefully adhered to the restrictions put in place to keep us safe. It may be that we feel as if we are living in a kind of exile, only in our own land, in our own home. God sees what lies ahead of us and always offers us new hope for a new beginning. The Spirit helps us not only in getting through the restrictive living that we are experiencing, but also in praying for the right kind of new way ahead, which is gradually coming into view. It may be painful in being born, but the joy of a new creation, if you will pardon the pun, far outweighs the drawbacks. Things will be different in the future, but if we trust our relationship with our Lord, he will help us to cope. Paul continues to assure us that we can trust how the Spirit prays for us because the Spirit can only pray in terms that agree with the will of God. He says, God searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. When we pray, we intend always to discover what the will and the purpose of God is in any given situation and to commit ourselves into walking into the future in the light of this, guided by the Spirit. Whatever we're praying for, we look to the Holy Spirit, God's gift poured out upon Jesus' followers at Pentecost to put us right on the right track again. We are filled with joy in anticipation of new beginnings, even out of old surroundings. God loves to breathe new life into our tired lives and situations. So we move forward in trust and hope in God's continued presence with us through his spirit. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, send us out. Gentle Spirit, calm our fears. Spirit of truth, lead us to a broader vision of your work. Spirit of strength in our weaknesses, Make us strong. Spirit of power, show us when and how to act for you. Holy Spirit, send us out with you as our guide. Amen. Creation sings the Father's song. He calls the sun to wake the dawn and run the course of day till evening falls in crimson rays. His fingerprints in flakes of snow, his breath upon this spinning globe. He charts the eagle's flight, commands the newborn baby's cry. Creation gazed upon his face, the ageless one in times and
let's say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Uh